Good morning. I am back very early. I woke up at four o'clock this morning with something on my heart. It's gonna piggyback on a message that I posted this morning about people in the workplace. There's a lot of people out there dealing with somebody in their workplace, trolls in the workplace, um, trying to trigger you and trying to um, get you to act out in the flesh. See, we're in a time period in the earth right now where God is pouring out his spirit onto all flesh. flesh. The Bible says, in the last days I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see, see visions. Old men will dream dreams. And that's what's happening right now. A lot of people, they don't know what's happening. They're in transition. God is pouring out his spirit onto all people. Believers, unbelievers, everybody. That's his grace. To the unbelievers, he's opening up your eyes to the true reality of, of what's happening in the world. You know, the veil is thinning between the spiritual and the physical realm. The devil is starting just to manifest, manifest itself boldly. He's being bold now. He's not even hiding anymore. And to um, the believers who already know the Lord, the people who are maybe lukewarm, he's turning them hot. He's turning y'all hot because it's time. It's time for us to start moving in power. It's time for us to start taking our position so we can make change in this earth. And the people who are already hot, he's just he's he's changing the color of your flame. See, flames have a different color. There's a yellow flame, a red flame, a blue flame, and a white flame. So if you're already on fire for God and uh, he's pouring out a spirit on you, you're increasing. You're turning into a different color flame. With that being said, see, there's a war going on that we can't see in the spiritual realm. You know, every day you're in a war, you're in a fight. And sometimes you think things just happen for no reason, but that's not true. Things happen for a reason. There is a devil and he does have demons. Unfortunately, some people, just like there's a vessel for the Holy Spirit to be used to give, to deliver a message, to give hope, to give a word of encouragement or exhortation, you know, or uh, some kind of miracle or moving healing. You know, there are agents for darkness who are willing to be used, some knowingly and unknowingly, against, you know, you or other people. See, a lot of people ask, or some don't know they say what is a demon where does it come from see before the flood that everybody on the earth was wicked everybody on the earth was wicked there was only a few people which you know Noah and his family they were found righteous in God's eyes that's why they built the ark but the Bible says that the people who on who were on earth in the days of Noah focused their mind on evil things continuously continuously so they were just evil there was no good there was no good on the earth everybody just was selfish uh, murder strife envy uh, you know just hating each other you know just drunkenness and, and just just bad humans so if you can kind of make that connection and look at the time we in the earth now you know look at the the current state of the government. Look at what's going on. Look at what they're doing to kids. I mean, they're teaching kids that they can change their gender. I know that's gonna trigger some people, but when you start messing with kids, I think that's where a lot of people have um, drawn the line. We're not having it. We're not having it. You can't, you start messing with kids, man, the gloves come off. You're telling a little boy he can become a girl and telling a little girl he can become a boy and that's, you're doing too much. Nope, not having it. But anyways, um, demons. So in the days of Noah, there were people who were evil on the earth who focused on wicked things and did wickedness continually. So God said, I'm done. I'm sending the flood. Noah, build the ark. And uh, I'm, I'm going to handle this. See, the body sleeps even when we die. The body sleeps or even when we die, the spirit is eternal. The spirit never dies and it never sleeps. You're either going to spend it in one place or another. So those disembodied spirits, they had 
and DNA, they couldn't be redeemed because a lot of them were hybrids. Um, they were hybrids. Their, their DNA was altered. So they were irredeemable. You see, that's why the devil was after our DNA. The devil was after our DNA. You know? The devil was after our DNA. And once you switch up your DNA, you can't be redeemed. Because you're no longer considered a human. See, a lot of people, they wonder, um, you know, people blame God for things like, why is this kid born with, born with Down syndrome? Why is this person born with this ailment? Why are people born like this and why are people born like that? See, God is a source of life, not death. So when somebody is born with some kind of physical ailment or some kind of disease or sickness, that's, that's not God, that's the devil. We live in a fallen world. When Adam and Eve sinned, our DNA was altered. Everything was pure, but everything was shifted when sin entered, entered into the physical realm when they manifested sin. So once, the more you sin, your DNA changes. That's how things are passed down from one generation to another. You know, your DNA changes. So when Adam and Eve sinned and fell, it altered DNA and that's how sickness and diseases and you know, when people are, don't, are born with these deformities, that's, that's where it comes from. Our DNA has been altered. You know? You know, people say it runs in the family. No, it don't run in the family. That's, that's sin in your bloodline. Our bloodline. You know, we're imperfect. All of us are imperfect in some kind of way. One of the, one of the sides of my face is bigger than the other. One of your feet is bigger than the other. If we were perfect, but once our once sin entered the world, our DNA was altered and so was our bodies. See, that's why, you know, when Jesus comes back, we're going to get our glorified body and we're going to be perfect. But until now, he's working us towards perfection by teaching us how to walk in the spirit. And that leads me to the topic of my video, familiar spirits. See, those demons that were wiped out in the flood, their spirits are eternal. They're not going to hell until judgment. So they're stuck on this Roman earth. That's what demons are. And demons are territorial. They don't want to leave the place where um, where they were, you know. And a demon's desire is to take possession of a body so they can manifest evil in the world. Because remember, like I said, their desire was to be evil continually. So even though they are a spirit now and they don't have a body, they're looking for bodies to manifest evil into the world. So they're looking for vessels. And a vessel for a demon is anybody who has trauma, anybody fooling around with, with uh, witchcraft, anybody who has any kind of soul wounds, unhealed wounds. That demon can get in there. That's an access point. Walking in the flesh, being disobedient to God, those are all access points for demons. Those are doors. So where was I? Sometimes I get in the spirit and I, I, I just lose track when I come out. So I have to ask the Holy Spirit to say, to bring me back. Um, familiar spirits. So there are demons who are familiar with your bloodline. See, demons are watchers. Even though you can't see them, they, there's a realm that we can't see the spiritual realm. And once God opens up your spiritual eyes, you'll be more aware of what's going on as far as angels and demons. But these demons, they followed your bloodline. That's why they're familiar with you. They're called familiar spirits. The definition of familiar is to be acquainted with something, well acquainted from near or far proximity. They're watching you from near or far. That's why your daddy was impatient, your granddaddy was impatient, and are you impatient? That's why your mama loved alcohol, your grandmama loved alcohol, and now you love alcohol. You know? Your granddaddy dealt with lust, your daddy dealt with us, now you're dealing with us. Those are familiar spirits. They're following your bloodline and they know your weakness. They're studying you and they try to trigger you. See, if they can trigger you, then they can get you into a cycle of sin and you can never live, never live in victory. And that's the title, that's, that's the, the topic of today's video, the familiar spirit. So as God is pouring out his spirit onto all flesh, the devil is trying to throw stumbling blocks in our path to, to get us back in the flesh so we can't walk in the spirit and manifest good on the earth. He wants us to uh, manifest evil.
So what you'll notice is as you get spiritually strong, things will start just happening. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it real. I, when I'm in traffic, sometimes I get impatient. You know, like when you cut me off, when you ride my bumper, when you're not using your blinker, when you're on a cell phone texting, it gets under my skin. So what I notice is I can be doing good. You know, I can be fasting for two or three days, just water. Yeah, I do that sometimes. You see, the Bible says when you fast and pray, not if. So when you crucify your flesh and when you forego food, you can hear God clear. You know, it's a sacrifice. You can't bend God's will and get him to do things for you, but you can just hear him clear and get revelation and become strong spiritually. So sometimes I'll fast for two or three days. I'm reading my Bible. I'm doing good. I'm praying. You know, I'm not living in sin. I'm feeling strong. Then all of a sudden, you know, I'll go to work or I'll go somewhere. I'll get in a car. And I'll get on the interstate. It'd be just me. Just me on the interstate. And all of a sudden, a car will come up real fast and get right on my bumper and ride me. No other cars on the road. LA has six lanes. They can get in any other lane, but they want to ride my bumper. And that, that kept happening for so long. And then the God, you know, the Lord finally, finally revealed it to me. That's a familiar spirit. It knows my weakness. It's familiar with my bloodline because my granddaddy was impatient. My brother is impatient. I'm impatient. We all, we suffer with, from impatience. You don't want to ride in the car with me, with us. Mm -mm. And that's just being honest. All of us have that thorn. See, Paul talks about a thorn in the flesh, the thorn in my side. You know, when he was, he was begging God, God, please remove this thorn because he kept falling to the same habitual uh, sin over and over again. Over and over again. But God said, my grace is sufficient for you. So yeah, you don't want to ride in the car with me because if somebody get on my bumper or, or keep cutting me off or, or I'll be ready to fight. I'm just going to keep it real. And I've really had to work on that. God has really been working on me with that. Before, when I was in Nashville, I noticed he started dealing with my impatience because traffic is worse, worse out here. I couldn't act out like that like I did in Nashville here. I'd be done got into a fight or something. But the familiar spirit is here to trigger you. It's here to trigger you. It's familiar with your weakness. It waits until you're spiritually strong so it can drag you back into the flesh to make you weak again or wait. It waits until you're weak again to um, totally break you. To totally break you. You see, we're trying to get out of cycles of sin. So the familiar spirit has come to get you back in it. See, the familiar spirit is, is to get you to feel rejected, to get you to feel abandoned and unloved. That's why they do, always do things to you to try to tear you down. Because whatever addiction or vice you have, you're trying to break out of that. But when you feel abandoned or rejected, you know, you may smoke cigarettes, you may look at pornography, you may have a drink of alcohol, you may have some kind of sexual experience or, or want to spend money when you feel down. Those are vices. And we're trying to break out of that kind of stuff. So the familiar spirit is designed to come and get you back into that sin cycle by feeling rejected. So this is the kind of knowledge. See, the Bible says my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And what it means to perish is to be separated from God. So when we don't have this kind of knowledge, we're easily dragged back into the flesh and we perish. We, we, we either can be separated God for in a moment or for eternity. So that's why I'm here trying to give you this knowledge. So, you know, you're not separated from God. You can stay in the spirit. So the next time something happens crazy, you know, it can be anything. It can be somebody at work. They'll go out of their way to do something crazy to you. Like, where did this come from? You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You just, you go to the store and everybody acting crazy. Everybody acting crazy. You know, the clerk done threw your change at you, got an attitude with you, and you, you asked them how, how their day was going. You know what I'm talking about. See, the devil knows your weakness. He's trying to trigger you. Don't let him trigger you. And that person at work, 
See, the devil doesn't have all the energy in the world. He doesn't. He's weak. You know, he's weak. So the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So I'm going to give you a, I'm going to drop some gems right here for you. The way you can wear out the devil is by moving in the fruit of the spirit. According to Galatians 5, 22 and 23. So when he comes to you with strife, either don't respond at all because you resist him. He'll go, he'll go away eventually because he's trying to get you to react. He's trying to get you to uh, lash out and get in the flesh. But when you resist him and you don't respond, he's not getting what, he's want, what he wants. And he gets tired and he goes away. Another way you can wear him out is by moving in the fruit of the spirit. When they come with you with that drama, just love him. Be nice to him. And it'll, it'll anger them more for a minute, but then they eventually they'll go away because they're not getting that reaction out of you. They failed their mission. Familiar spirit. Listen, don't be a victim. Don't don't take the bait. Don't fall for it. If they're at work aggravating you, if they, you know, some of them can be in your family. You know, every time you're doing good, you get that call with somebody with family drama. Nope, hang the phone up, block them, do whatever you got to do. Don't go for it. Don't take the bait. I don't even know where I was. Uh, I, like I said, I, I get in the spirit, man, and I can go all day. And uh, when I come out of the spirit, I just forget completely what I was talking about. So hopefully that made sense. I don't even remember what I said. But that, I guess that means it's time for me to go because I don't ever want to say anything for my soul. You know? Stay prayed up. Stay vigilant. Um, don't let these agents get to you. Don't let these agents see. Some of them don't know. Don't take don't don't take it out on them, because some of them don't know. Some of them do know. A lot of people are in the witchcraft and voodoo and uh, new age and you know all of these this paganism and things that are going on. Some of them know, but a majority of people don't know. They just victims. That's why God says pray for our enemies. Some of them don't know that they're being used against us or used for darkness. They don't know. So one prayer that I always do is pray that their eyes of understanding are open and that they can see um, that way they can get to healing. Cause we, I don't want to see nobody perish. I don't want to see that. I hate seeing people stuck in trauma and bondage, you know, and being mean spirited. I don't like that. I love people. I used to be stuck in depression and anxiety and, and all that stuff. It's not a good feeling. So I can only imagine how they feel. That's what's given me the compassion to you know, not lash out at people, you know. I'll give you an example. I used to be real impatient, like, if you did anything, but I'd, I'd go off on you. I would, I'd just go off. I was at the uh, restaurant down here and um, ordered my food. And there was a guy, you know, he was, he was back there cooking. And um, I think I forgot. They forgot something on my order. And I went up to the counter and I, I said, hey, um, can I get, you know, can I get this? You know, you forgot it on my order. And he didn't respond. Normally, <laughs> normally I would have said, you MF, didn't you hear me talking to you? I know, a different person now. But that's normally what I would have did because I would have been drawn into the flesh. But, you know, in my mind, I said, you know what, maybe he didn't hear me or maybe there's something, maybe he's busy. It, you know, walking in the spirit, you, it kind of makes you, the spirit is your counselor, your advocate. So it helps you kind of navigate the world. That's why we need him. So the Holy Spirit said, just chill out. Maybe he's not hearing you or whatever. So I stood there for a minute patiently, by the way, patience isn't. How long you wait patience is how you wait so when you wait in joy and when you wait unbothered that's when you be impatient but you can wait you can wait forever and be impatient because you're complaining all the time but i was waiting you know i i, I was unbothered i was like you know maybe he didn't hear me so all of a sudden he turned around and then i seen another employee walk out the back and he started doing sign language to him and i was like oh man i'm glad i didn't go off because the guy was deaf he didn't hear me see the Holy Spirit will help you. He will help you not make an ASS of, out of yourself. 
and he will help you navigate this world and you will quit uh, letting these demons bother you. God's grace is sufficient for you, you know? Ask him for help to move in the fruit of the spirit so you're not, you know, dragged back into cycles of sin and you're not triggered by these agents. You know, God's got you, you know? God is in control. And he's pouring out his spirit on all flesh. That's what you're feeling. That's why you feel different. That's why uh, a lot of people are coming around you preaching the gospel and your circle is starting to change and you, you're you losing the desire to do and be around certain things because God is pouring out his spirit on you. He's waking you up. He's opening up your spiritual eyes, your spiritual eyes of understanding. And he's calling you. He's calling me. I went from lukewarm to hot real quick. I was lukewarm just two months ago. And when he turned me hot, you know, I sacrificed everything. See, I'm an actor. And, you know, in Hollywood, they don't like Jesus. Just because of some of the agendas they push. So I put my career on the line and everything. I t I'm talking about Jesus all day. Because I would rather stand in the council of God and acknowledge him before men. And he announced me in heaven, then denied Jesus on earth. And he turned me away when I get there. It's not worth it to me. No opportunity, no paycheck, uh, no open door, none of that. See, there's a lot of Christians that they're scared to confess Jesus. You know, because they're scared to lose business. They're scared for doors to close in their face. They're scared to lose friends. I don't care. If you don't like that, I don't like Jesus, then, you know, it is what it is. You know, there's a tribe waiting on me somewhere. There's people who love Jesus that he will connect me with. I'm not compromising my faith to appease a man. I'm not doing that. That's cowardly. That's not, that's not a masculine quality. <laughs> all right i'm i'm done i i don't want to start rambling but i think you guys got the idea don't be triggered ask god to help you you pull on that grace and either don't respond don't react walk away or wear him out with the fruit of the spirit i hope you go out and conquer your day and god bless you